stunning. What about you? Oh, I'm just like on Instagram, you know, chilling. Don't you have homework to do? I mean, I might. Who knows? Now, really? I mean, yeah, look at it. That's so cool. Thank you. I know, it is. So, um, Old Town Square. Very exciting. So, Vinchika, what did you do last night? You know, watched The Bachelor. I um, was on Instagram for a while, posted, got a thousand likes. And then I slept for 12 hours, which is pretty nice. So, what was your reaction to getting a 10 out of 10 on the test? So, my horoscope said really good things, so I wasn't too surprised. So, what did you do last night? So last night I spent two hours doing calc homework, three hours doing physics homework, four hours prepping for the stats midterm, and also three hours doing my psych project. So how do you feel about your grade on that quiz? So first off, I basically worked my butt off the entire night studying all my time today. And Chica, she did nothing. I don't I really don't understand how this happened. And for me personally, this is like a personal defeat of my life model. I don't know what's going on. They do know with probability q it is a good car, and with probability 1 minus q it is a lemon. So let's say you're interested in buying a used car. Coming in, you don't have as much information about a car's quality as the seller. You're really hoping to buy a peach, a high quality car, but for all you know, you can sell a lemon, a low quality car. Let's take a look at this car. Doesn't it look absolutely flawless in every way? See what I mean? I'll sell you this car, this perfect car, for just $15,000. I'll take it for $12,500. So here's the problem. Buyers who really can't be certain about a car's quality are unwilling to pay the true price of a peach. Because owners of high quality cars are unable to make deals at the higher price, they drop out of the market. Eventually, there's only going to be low quality cars left in the market, and there's no way I'm paying $15,000 for a car that's not even worth $10,000. This is such a market for lemons.
Building on Akerloft's idea, I use the example of insurance companies to demonstrate a possible solution to markets with asymmetric information. Our health insurance company wants to take on clients that are disease-free and likely to lead a healthy lifestyle. I'm healthy and my finances are in good order. Take me on, please. I'm healthy and my finances are in good order. Take me on, please. I'm healthy and my finances are in good order. Take me on, please. How can I ever pick the right clients? Why don't you use screening? What was that? Screening. If you want to figure out more information about your potential clients, offer clients a spectrum of insurance products with different costs and benefits. Customers with poor health will choose more expensive products with higher benefits, and those with great health will choose products with less benefits. Your clients will self-sort themselves and you'll have so much more information about their personal situation. This is my resume. I've studied at Harvard, Wharton, and Stanford, just graduated this year. Um, I went to a generic high school, graduated in 2017 as well. Okay. So, yeah, thank, thank you for thank considering you. us. This one with Harvard is obviously better, and I just don't want to. like Adam Smith. Oh, don't worry. I am definitely Adam Smith. Okay. So, what do you think about Akerloff and Stiglitz ideas? Look, I always say that the economy is guided by the invisible hand. True, it's crazy out there in the free market, as it should be with capitalism. It's really a situation in which everyone is spending for themselves. Now, in an economy like this, will there be asymmetry in information? Yes, of course. Sellers will do whatever they can to get the highest returns for their profit. And sure, some buyers will be screwed over. But the good and bad products, these lemons and peaches, will be sorted through the workings of the market. This free market economy will lead to the greatest prosperity, and I mean that. This guy, George Ackerlaw, is it? He's crazy to think that this economy, left to its own, would lead to inefficient outcomes. And this Stiglitz character wants the government to prevent market failures caused by such informational symmetry. This hand that the government will be using doesn't seem so invisible to me. Where did they go again? MIT? Geez, American education is really down in the dumps. People don't call me the father of communism for no reason. The capitalist process of production leads to so much exploitation of the consumer. This asymmetry of information issue is only one of the cases in which this fact is so terribly apparent. Government intervention here is a necessity. Stiglitz was on the right track. In this capitalist system, I guess all we can do is create a federal statute that mandates signaling through screening so that all of the information is public and symmetrical. But I still think countries should consider creating political economies so that there is never a threat of sellers tricking their buyers and so that there are never lemons and peaches for the choosing.